Hi there, Steve Chittenden from SAP here. We're going to be looking at physical inventory counting today and how we actually count those physical things inside our stores or distribution centers or, or warehouses. So this is a physical act of going out and actually counting items to make sure what we think is in the system matches the reality. Now, there's a few stages to this. At any point, we can check those stages by looking at um, our overview screens. And I'll show you that first to see where we are at with our counting progress. Uh, and also what we call our posting process as well. So to start off with though, if we wanna count things, we have to tell the system, what is it you want to count? And there's many different methodologies and um, ways of doing that. I'm gonna do a run through of a very, very simple count, uh, creating a count for a single item and then going and counting it. The way in which I'm actually going to count it is by using a mobile app. Of course, with Fury, we can use Fury on any mobile devices. I have changed this mobile app a little bit, or the Fury app, I should say, just to make it fit a little bit better on my mobile screen. So I'm actually going out there and using it in a little bit of an easier way. Uh, and also, once we've counted it, of course, we can manage the process and the activity and see how far we're going through that count process. There may be many, many, many items to count in the, in the real system. Um, and of course, we can then post the count and see how it actually went. Did we count the right number? Were we massively over, massively under? Uh, were there any issues with the count? So on and so forth. So just to recap, those basic stages again are, we go and take a look at creating the count, we then count it, and then we look at the activities and see, was the count any good? So let's go and do that process now in the system. So let me just quickly pop into the, um, the system here for a second. Uh, let's go into here. Now, just like most of my uh, demonstrations, I usually start with an overview screen. So what we can see if I go into my overview screen is, uh, and we've seen this before in lots of the other sessions, uh, everything in my distribution center or warehouse or storeroom uh, in one spot. So I can see all my throughput, stuff going in and out and all that kind of stuff. And again, we can drill down into that. But here I've got all my counts. How are my counts progressing? And you can see that all the recent ones have been completed, which is great. But if I want to, I can go and then see all of my counts and see what's happened with them. And I can see that the process is uh, mostly complete for most of them, but some of them haven't actually been uh, posted yet. So maybe there's some issues with those counts. Maybe I need to go and do a recount on them and go and check things out. Recounting, of course, is part of this process as well. So um, if I wanted to, of course, I could go and check those guys out. Let's go and have a look at one. So let's go into that inventory document here. Oh, that's a pretty old one. Uh, and I can see exactly what was counted. When was it counted? We can see the book quantity versus the count quantity. So what that means is, you know, how much did we think we had versus what was physically counted? And we can see here, obviously, there's a big difference, which might be why this one hasn't been posted yet. So one needs to go and recount that and take a look at it and check it out and see if that is actually the case. So we can manage that process really nicely through these overview screens, uh, take a look at what's going on with it. And if I want to, I can filter by count status as well. So maybe I'm not really interested in everything that's been fully counted. I want to see stuff that hasn't been counted or in fact, may be partially counted in here as well. So I can see that straight away, which is fantastic. So I can see here I've got some open counts that should have been completed. I've got some that have been partially completed, so on and so forth. So now that we know we can control the process, let's go and take a look at doing the process from uh, start to finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my uh, physical inventory area and you'll see here I've got my tiles laid out as part of the process. Yeah, how do we actually do it? So let's create the physical inventory document now. Now, how you select the items in your physical inventory, there are, as I said, there's many different methodologies to this. You know, we might want to do it by a particular area, particular storage type, particular material group. I might want to see things that have not been counted since a particular date because I want to look at stuff that's, uh, I don't want to recount stuff I've recently counted in the last period or financial period or anything else. So here I can see all my items that I'm going to, um, uh, basically I, I, are available for me to count. And I can see when they were last counted, days, and I can see turnover. Oh, interestingly, some of these items have not been counted, which is uh, pretty interesting here. So that uh, arm assembly here hasn't been counted. So what we can do is we can select that guy and we, let's go count it. So I'm not sure, um, I, I physically might think there's not as many as I have uh, as the system. Again, we could select millions of materials in here if I wanted to, but that's fine. I'm just gonna do one. Let's create that physical inventory document. Now, at this point, when we create the physical inventory document, you notice it says split by. 
Uh, the reason it's doing that is I could actually split it by different areas if I want to, or types of materials if I want to. Uh, one material, of course, could be in several different batches and locations and things, so we could split it across that. Or let's say I've got maybe hundreds of items in my account that I've just created. Obviously, this one only has one, but there could be many, many. Um, I might want to split that across multiple counters, people physically who go out and count. So if I say I only want 20 items per count, then I can have, if I've got 200 items to count, 10 people doing counts at the same time. So obviously it makes life a little bit easier. But in this case, real simple one, it's just one. So I'm just going to create that count document, which is awesome. And it gives me a count document number, which in this case ends in 392. Now, if I go back to my um, overview screen here, uh, let's go and take a look at that. I should be able to see if I put in my location that my count has been created and there it is 391 and nothing's yet been counted there's only one item to count nice and easy but of course again there could be many in here so now i've got the physical act of counting to do i've got to actually get out there and count it so this is where i'm going to use my my phone to physically now walk out onto the uh, onto the warehouse floor so here i am walking out there whoops sorry mr phone i don't want so I've come out onto the shop floor. I need to count this. So first thing to do is I need to enter my count number. So let's do that now. So my count number was one, two, three, four, five, three, two. I could, of course, search for that or do anything else I need to, which is great. But now it will then show me my count, uh, where do I need to go to count it. It's the item I've, I've selected. It gives me my material number, the count number. Uh, I could set it to a zero count, which means um, I... I there's none in there. And the reason it's a button rather than just typing zeros, it's too easy to leave the field blank. So we enforce that by having a zero button there. But I've gone out and I've checked that item. Yes, there are 1,999 uh, 1, in there. Uh, obviously i counted those very very quickly very physically but just for the purpose of demonstration so that's all good i then enter that and it will count it for me which is great and it's now saying no new record found because i've completed my count so very very simple it's um go out there physically check it enter the count i did that on the mobile phone so obviously i was just replicating that on the screen here let's pop back into the system here and what we should now see is if I just run that again, all good. Get down there. So one of one is counted because I've counted it. So what we've got to do now, you can see here that it's not been posted yet. I've got a, I've got like a chance here to go and take a look at it. And what I can do is I can go in here. Yes, it's been counted, but I can actually now see obviously who counted it, when did they do it, and all those kind of good things. But I can also see that um, the count versus the uh, what the actual uh, book value was so i can actually see how much did i actually count here and, and value and everything else and i can see here that uh, obviously it's gone from 10 to uh, 1999 uh, so i've counted it up quite significantly but that's okay uh, this is just a demonstration of that you can see the value change there which is great and obviously it has a value in there as well as what the, the quantity so the next stage is to post that into into stock and it may well be that because i've counted that so high that the system might actually not let me post that in which let's see what happens here so let's go back into here and then i need to um process the count results so i want to finish it off as part of this process here so i need to change that number to my current one fantastic and here i have it uh what's been counted all good post the difference there great we're going to post that in and it's telling me i thought that would happen it's so very interesting this one so it's telling me that because that difference is so high uh, that i counted because i just made it up it's saying hey i'm not going to let you post that because it's too financially uh, viable so now what i need to do it's a really nice demonstration i can fix that i can actually go back into here back to my um my initial screen and i can initiate initiate a recount so what happens here is uh, request a recount of that again, 
it will go back to my phone, get the guys to go out on the floor and recheck it, and then we go through that process again. So there we can see the four count process from start to finish, and even what would happen is if we try to muck it up and actually get too high an amount. So just to recap, uh, what do we do here? Of course, we've got full visibility. We can now see the process of our counts. We can see what's happening with them, where they are within the status and everything else. I can go in there and I can actually create my count. I'm, I'm using different methodologies, things that haven't been counted for a while, things that maybe have high turnover. I want to count those different values all those different methodologies are available to us um, I then physically go and do the count and I did that on a on a phone but of course you can do that on any device um, using our fury uh, screens and then I monitored and actually had a look at the progress I could see that I counted the item but then when I went to check it and to post that count I could see that hang on a second Steve you did something a bit weird there I'm not sure that amount was right so it's showing the system saying hey why don't you go and check that again? Of course, ultimately, we could post it if it was correct, but the system there was giving me a warning to say, hey, that item seemed um, that seemed, seemed like a lot that you've counted on there, so go and check it out. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was a, a process from start to finish, and um, obviously, there's a lot more uh, we could show you in this space around recounting and checking and everything else, but that was just a quick run through of physical inventory in S4. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, thanks for listening.